Another final here, the Buffalo Bills just outlasting the New York Jets 20 to 12. Was well, not the prettiest performance here by Buffalo this season, but it is another win. Uh, their fourth in a row as they get this thing turned in the right direction at the right time. But plenty of penalties, plenty of issues. The third phase was not clean even in the fourth quarter. But they don't ask how, just how many. And it's the 10th win of the season for the Buffalo Bills. For more, we head out to Buffalo, where the lead voice for the NFL on CBS is standing by. Our Tony Romo uh, here to break this one down. Tony, sort of a no picture on the scorecard Sunday for the Buffalo Bills here. Wasn't their cleanest performance of the year, but they come out of it with a win. Is that that type of Sunday where you can just put it in the win column, put it behind you, and feel good about the performance? Times here during this last month, I feel like it's the National Football League. It's hard to win, especially, I mean, division opponents start to know you so well as you, know, you can see it's like the tendencies that are created. Like they stop Josh Allen on a quarterback design run, and uh, most teams wouldn't know to be a little prepared for that in that moment. But I think you saw two teams fight, battle, and leave it all on the field today. But this is December football, January football. It's ugly sometimes. And the weather today, Hard to describe to people because on TV it doesn't always do it justice, but it was tough out there. The ball was really slick and it was a steady rain throughout most of the day and it was windy and you saw that kind of um, allow the game to be shortened in some ways. In other words, no turnovers. Everyone was trying to protect the ball because they knew that was going to be the game changer. And the game turned on two plays, I feel like, when um, C.J. Mosley jumped off sides mm -hmm. in the first half and it allowed Buffalo to extend their drive and go in and score the touchdown before the half. That gave you the wiggle room. And then obviously at the end of the game, uh, you know, Dawson Knox, or sorry, at the end of the game when Josh Allen kind of just took over. I mean, that's the thing is having a guy like that just control it with his legs, with his arm, and that's the game. Yeah, he is undoubtedly one of the most dominant players in this game that we love. And you outline sort of how the day maybe brought these two teams closer than they actually are. And they do protect the football here in inclement weather, which is great, but they're second in the league in turnovers. They committed their fair share of penalties, block punt in the fourth quarter. Do you think Buffalo, when you look at the rest of the AFC, can continue to succeed this way down the stretch? Buffalo is for real. Von Miller hurts. I mean, he had mm -hmm. 38, you know, pressures by himself, like quarterback pressures. The next closest is 17 with Rousseau. And then you got like 14 and 12. But by committee, they'll be able to make up for it. The problem is you're going to run into, like, home field advantage is so huge on this side. Can you lose? Sure. But the likelihood that a Josh Allen loses at home or a Mahomes, you know, or a Burrow, whichever one of these guys gets that, gets a 20% advantage at least, if not more, against these other quarterbacks. And that's going to be the difference to me. I think these games are so big. Just win them, however you have to do. And then... You know, this is the time of year where guys start to separate in teams, you know, depth, all the other stuff, but home field advantage. These games, I'm telling you, this year, I think who gets home field comes out of the AFC. Yeah, it's going to be huge to see how it all plays out here down the stretch. The Jets now embroiled as they were coming into this game in a really tight wild card race, especially following this loss. Uh, a loss of Quinn and Williams here. We'll see how long as he goes down with a non-contact injury. That's going to play huge down the stretch. But maybe a moment here for Mike White, who was in and out of the game all day, taking big hits. I mean, to strap it up and play quarterback in this league is hard enough. What did you make of White's day here and the, and the guts he showed? You got to be really proud of him. I mean, it's hard, right? This is one of the tougher teams to go against from a pass perspective. I mean, they make it difficult with the design of the defense. Schematically, they adjust to things. They're kind of simple on their end, but to us as a quarterback, it looks very, like, muddy. You can't mm -hmm. really tell who's one-on-one -on -one and what the leverage and who's double teamed. And so I thought he battled, fought hard. I think, you know, both teams wish they could have ran the ball better. Um, the Jets got it going a little bit, but truly the turnover when Flacco came in on the fumble, that was huge. Uh, just – Untimely injuries today really hurt the Jets. I really think Mike White goes out, Flacco misses a throw. Then the next time he goes out and faint is hurt, and now it's a turnover. I mean, that's the game. It comes down to those things in conditions like this. We will see if they can right the ship down the stretch. Uh, that's our guy, the best in the business, Tony Romo, breaking it down from Buffalo. Go get warm, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Well, when we return on HQ, a big injury perhaps providing a big result. The Steelers trying to make their way back with their back up against the Ravens. That's next on HQ. 
Eagles and the Giants in East Rutherford. Playoff picture beginning to galvanize. Birds can punch their ticket with a win or a tie. Giants, well, they know plenty about a tie coming off of one winless in four straight mid first quarter. Eagles with a third and six. Jalen Hurts connecting with Devontae Smith for the seven yard gain and the first down. Pinpoint accuracy there from Hurts. We're just showing off all of the ability. Hurts, nine of 10, 64 yards on the drive would end in a Miles Sanders touchdown. Eagles up seven, nothing far from finished. Next possession, Hurts to Smith. Julian Love just whiffing on it. I mean, what are you doing, baby? Eagles up 14, nothing. Smith, a touchdown in back-to-back -back games. So that's two drives, 26 plays, two touchdowns, and an MVP candidate. Goes from bad to worse here for Big Blue. Yuck. Hunter Jake Gillian drops the ball. Jamie Gillian, that is, uh, tries to kick it off the ground. And you just can't do that. You're not allowed. It's in the rule book. The Scottish Hammer, flag for illegal kicking. Uh, first play of the ensuing drive. Great field position. Hurts to a wide open A.J. Brown. Man can get behind a defense. Eagles up 21-0 at the break. Brown's 10th TD of the season. And going back to the goalposts, lead the office on line one. Late third quarter, Eagles now up 27-14. Hurts this time by leg and making a happy fan out of it. Eagles up 34-14 over Cashes on that touchdown. And it's nothing but celebration. Mid-fourth now, just over midfield. Had those rushing stats. Sanders, got 40-yard touchdown scamper. Hit it 41-14 after the extra point, Sanders. 17 totes, a career high, buck 44 on the ground. Two touchdowns, also ties a career high as the Eagles go on to win it 48 to 22. Hang a number, why don't you? 12 and one, there's a number for you as they become the number one team to punch their ticket to the playoffs. Philadelphia in the tournament, no matter what happens from here on out following this 48-22 win in the division. New York, meanwhile, just can't find a W. That's five straight weeks without one following the tie a week ago. All right, taking a look as we do each and every week at the exploits of one Jalen Hurts. He's been fantastic, and there's no other way to put it. 20-plus passing touchdowns, 10-plus rushing touchdowns in a season. Joins an elite list of dual threats here in 2022. Circle that name, Jalen Hurts, as he skyrockets up those MVP odds. All right, let's dig in with the guys. Tyler Sullivan, Rick Spielman here to break it down. Our NFL analysts, uh, gentlemen, the Eagles punched their tickets to the playoffs once again in convincing fashion. 40 plus points in a divisional matchup, a place that people don't like going into play in East Rutherford. Uh, I'll go your way first here, Rick. It's been a fantastic season for Jalen Hurts, and I feel like not enough noise has been made regarding that MVP conversation. In your eyes, where does he stack up against the other individual performers across the league right now? Oh, the way they're playing right now, to me, he is the leading candidate for MVP, and we even talked about it last week. Not only is he winning with his arm, but he's winning with his legs. I mean, they just dominated over the last couple weeks, and that's a lot to do with the way Jalen Hurst is playing. Now, it helps that they're able to run the ball as well. Sanders had a big game today. It looked like his speed and bursts were there. Uh, they ran up and down the field on, on the Giants' defense, who was one of the worst-rated uh, defenses against the run in the NFL and that showed up today. Yeah, I think you put Jalen Hurts right in that conversation with Patrick Mahomes, with Josh Allen, with Joe Burrow. He is, if not the most impactful quarterback that we've seen right now in the NFL because like what Rick, what Rick was saying, he can do it with his arm, he can do it with his legs, and he's proving doubters every, wrong every single week. You know, I look back at these past two weeks with the Philadelphia Eagles, I feel like everybody had taken the points with the Tennessee Titans, and now everybody was taking the points with the New York Giants going into this game, somewhat doubting the ability of this Philadelphia team to close and what are they doing these back-to-back -back weeks? Absolute blowouts. And more importantly, they're stopping key players in the running game. Obviously, limiting Derrick Henry on the ground, limiting Saquon Barkley, who was dealing with injuries, but limited him in this game. Hurts, along with this entire team, is flexing on the NFL right now. And I don't know any team in the NFC that can really rival them at this point. We've seen Minnesota kind of play down to competition. We've seen Dallas certainly play down to competition like they're playing in Houston this week. I don't know any team 
in the NFC that is coming anywhere close to them, especially now with an uncertain quarterback situation with the San Francisco 49ers. It feels like it's their conference to lose. Uh, no doubt about that as they do flex their muscles here. Their third consecutive game with 35 plus points. Uh, we know 350 plus, 350 plus what they've accomplished here offensively, Tyler. If you are one of those NFC teams trying to figure out the Eagles or game plan for them at least, where is the weakness? How do you combat it? If you're going about your business trying to stop this team, where do you start? Yeah, it's really hard to do, right? I mean, because <laughs> they do a lot of things. Like, if they can't run the football, it's okay. Jalen Hurts will just throw it all over the field. And if they can't throw it, well, they're more than happy to give it to Miles Sanders to close things out. For me, it would start with Jalen Hurts and keeping him contained in the pocket, forcing him to throw the football. Again, that might be a full errand at the end of the day, but to me, he's most lethal. And this offense is most dynamic when he's utilizing his legs and then throwing the football. So for me, it's trying to contain what Jalen Hurts can do on the ground and forcing him to beat you with his arms so far he's been able to do that with flying colors this season but if i'm any team in the nfc or you know potentially in the super bowl that's how i would stop them contain him in the pocket and have, have him try to beat you with his arm yeah i don't know if i would say that the, the way to contain him is keep him off the field i mean whoever the <laughs> uh, opposing offense is you gotta just keep control of the ball and don't let this offense get on the field because their defense has played great over the last couple weeks. They're a lot better in run defense than they were, and that was maybe their Achilles heel as we talked about them, especially when they went through that little down period when uh, they lost and then they uh, to the Redskins, and then they barely survived against the Indianapolis Colts. But now they're back on the roll. They got Davis back on uh, defense to go along with Linville Joseph, who helped secure the run defense. And they're just, the only way you can stop this team the way they're playing right now is keep the offense off the field. Yeah, you know, I like asking you guys good questions. That might be one without an answer right now, gentlemen. Great work to start us off here. Plenty more coming with Rick and Tyler.